Skyrim is a decade old, but there's still stuff people don't realize you can do. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks 10, Overlooked Mechanics in Skyrim. Starting off at number 10, you can be a hitman for a single mission. It's an interesting thing I, I never actually knew about. For a mission, one mission, there's an infiltration mechanic. In the main quest called Diplomatic Immunity, you're supposed to infiltrate the embassy of this despotic Thalmor. Normally, you can only get so far as the party. The rest of the embassy is considered off limits, so you have to sneak through them. But if you're clever and sneak in a set of Thalmor robes, you can actually walk around the embassy without drawing any attention, Hitman style. The only problem is if you're not playing as an Altmer, a high elf, then the guards will be suspicious of you and stop you. It is a pretty neat little additional way to get through this mission that a lot of people totally missed out on because this sort of disguise mechanic isn't really explored anywhere else in the entire game at least that we're aware of it's a cool bonus that you can do just for this mission and hopefully it's a mechanic they will actually expand on in elder scrolls 6 social stealth is always a lot of fun when it pops up in games and it would be cool to see more of it in this series specifically at number 9, you can actually drop gear to start fights. It's a pretty funny emergent thing that developers put in the game. Sometimes people will actually fight over loot. This only seems to happen in certain spots. Uh, I've seen people report it happening in Markarth, Riften, and in various bandit camps when they're unaware of your presence. If you want to see people get like suicidally greedy, just drop a few random items from your inventory onto the ground. Most people will ignore it. Others will ask you if they can take it or try to give the dropped item back to you. What kind of filthy barbarian just throws that trash around you? But by far the funniest outcome happens when people start fighting over it. Probably the easiest place to trigger it is in Riften. I made sure that a few specific NPCs were around and I dropped some junk, watched the sparks fly. You can play the game for hundreds of hours and not realize that this was even possible either. And of course it has to be intentional too, so it's just an all around cool little AI thing that happens occasionally. It gets ridiculous when you're able to get people to fight over any old junk, not even valuable stuff, but it's still cool. At number eight, there are symbols all over Skyrim left by the Thieves Guild. You may have noticed some weird symbols drawn on buildings or structures around Skyrim, but a lot of the time they're not obvious and they're subtle enough that you could probably play the game for hundreds of hours and not realize they're there, let alone actually mean something. These symbols are actually called shadow marks and each one has a specific meaning. They've been left around by the Thieves Guild and they're basically meant to be clues or information to help fellow thieves out. One symbol lets you know there's a cache supplies hidden nearby or if a place is considered dangerous or safe. There's actually a lot of these around and while their meaning doesn't exactly match up to what you'll find in certain places it's still a really cool detail that you can find that is also pretty easy to miss. The only way you can even learn what all these symbols are is if you pick up the shadow marks book which can be it can be found in a few places. Uh, the book illustrates what each symbol means and like I said a lot of the time the symbols are pretty well hidden so you probably won't get a whole lot out of this knowledge but it's a really cool feature to add into the game, even if in the end of the day, it's mostly just a cool bit of lore and world building rather than a really helpful mechanic if you're a thief. At number seven, the map is real time and it actually shows your location in 3D space. Uh, you can tell that the world map is in real time by the clouds moving, but it's even better you can see on the world map when you're absorbing a dragon soul. Like try it out. It's a lot more visible if you run away from the dragon corpse a little bit before it begins burning. So your cursor on the map isn't blocking the view. Uh, a user named Optical Crow pointed out that the map literally shows your position in 3D as well. Like if you turn on console commands, it just fly up super high the marker on the map will show your cursor up in the clouds it'll even tilt the screen up if you're high enough which is actually pretty interesting it might all just be a quirk of the engine but it's all pretty unusual for a map a lot of people find the map in skyrim kind of annoying to deal with but it's actually got some pretty interesting mechanics built into it for whatever reason at number six, Unrelenting Force summons a hidden dragon when used on an orb in Blackreach. It's a weird thing they hid in the game. Anyone who's traveled through Blackreach knows about the big glowing orb you can find hanging from the ceiling. It's one of the most memorable pieces of scenery in the area, actually. For most of us, getting to the top and beating the boss enemy at the end of the Hall of Rumination is the end of our adventures in the Debate Hall. But for whatever reason, Blackreach is also hiding a big secret in that orb. If you get as close to it as you can, 
and then fuzz Roda the orb, you will summon an ancient dragon. Well, it looks like an ancient dragon. It doesn't really do the damage of one. Trying to fight this thing in an underground area is pretty awkward, but it's also not too hard to deal with. And it's looted standard dragon stuff, leaving us to ask, what's the point? It's a strange secret to include in the game. Most people who find this thing seem to blunder into it totally by mistake, and many of them didn't even realize how they triggered its appearance in the first place. Like, we're all for hiding secret enemies in games, so this little secret mechanic is pretty cool, even though the reward is underwhelming. At number five, NPCs never run out of arrows. A funny little thing to keep in mind, NPCs, whether they're allies or enemies, just always have ammo. As long as they have one arrow or bolt in their inventory, they can keep firing forever. So an easy way to make your follower do more damage is give them one of your best arrows and save the rest for yourself. Or better yet, just get infinite arrows. This Reddit user named Sir Crinkly mentions that it's possible to get a ton of arrows using a similar method to the companion trick. Instead of giving a single arrow, arrow to an ally, pickpocket one in the guard's inventory while they're doing target practice. As long as you remove all the other arrows from their inventory, they'll keep firing whatever you've got into the target, and all you have to do is go over and collect them. How NPC inventories work in this game can actually lead to some pretty clever exploits, but this one is more just for fun. There are actually easier ways to get a ton of arrows, this is just funny. And number four is a couple of weird mining things. Some people don't know that you can mine for ore in this game. Uh, the whole mechanic is sort of obscure, but there's some weird tricks surrounding this whole thing that can pop up, like these incredibly rare creatures called shell bugs. At least according to the Elder Scrolls wiki, they only pop up in two locations in all of Skyrim and both in the Forgotten Vale. You can't even kill these things normally. They're completely immune to standard damage, but you can mine them. Three hits will kill them though. They're used to make this unique shell bug helmet, which I had no idea even existed. It's actually one of the better helmets in the game, having the third highest base armor ratings of any helmet according to the Elder Scrolls wiki. There's another weird mining thing in the game as well. This one's a little more well known, and a lot of people have mentioned this trick in the past, but if you equip a pickaxe and then use it to hit ore, you can collect materials a lot faster. Dual wield two pickaxes and cast elemental fury, you can mine ore even faster. The fact that they even made it possible to mine ore without doing the can animation is kind of cool, but being able to go mine crazy just swinging two pickaxes around at double speed is both helpful and totally ridiculous looking. At number three, you can instantly kill a Briarheart by pickpocketing their Briarheart from them. Some of the tougher Forsworn enemies you have to deal with are these creeps called Forsworn Briarhearts. As part of their lore, they actually have their hearts cut out and replaced with an object called the Briarheart. So they're basically zombies, and these Briarhearts are the things that are keeping them alive. So an interesting little gameplay mechanic is that it makes it possible to kill them instantly by removing the item from their inventory. Yes. They're actually just carrying their hearts around. And if you can manage to sneak up on them and take it, they'll just immediately drop dead. How you're able to sneakily remove a fake heart from someone's chest, I, I, I have no idea, but it is a clever little detail and honestly kind of a cool way of integrating the lore with the mechanics, which a couple of these points have actually turned out to be. Obviously, this is not a new game. So to see that kind of thing more integrated into the next Elder Scrolls game would be really neat. At number two, cloak spells can get really big. It's expected that dual casting would make spells stronger, but sometimes they can have unique and powerful effects depending on the spell. Like with the various cloak spells, you use dual casting and instead of just making them stronger, they actually make the area they affect bigger. So you can make it pretty big, which is a standard dual cast, but if you want to make a really big cloak, then you chug some fortified destruction potions and that'll make the effect even bigger. It can get kind of ridiculous how big these spells can get actually. With enough of a boost, these cloaks can cover nearly an entire town, and it is chaos. The fact the game lets you go that overboard with the size of spells is awesome, and magic in general is pretty cool in this game, even if they weakened it a little bit in Skyrim. There is a ton of fun stuff that you can get away with. And finally, at number one, you can move at normal speed while sneaking with an unexpected perk. It's a minor one, but it's incredibly useful if you sneak around a lot. In the blocking skill tree, there's a perk called Block Runner. It makes it so you can move faster while you have a shield up. This is meant to make it easier to move around while shielded, and normally you move a lot slower with a shield up, but for whatever reason, it also works with sneaking. At this point, it has to be considered an intentional feature because the trick still works. If you get this perk, equip a shield, pull 
hold it down, crouch down, start sneaking, and you start moving at a normal walking speed while still being in stealth. It makes it so you can move much, like much faster, while still being in stealth mode. The only downside is that you have to do it with the shield up the whole time. It seems like a thing that shouldn't work, but it does, and it's fun in RPGs when certain systems do things you wouldn't think and work together when you wouldn't think they would, and this is one of the better combos out there. It's as if stealth archery wasn't already overpowered enough, this pretty much eliminates the one negative of that playstyle, the slow movement speed. That's all for today though, leave us a comment, let us know what you think, if you like this video click like, if you're not subscribed now's a great time to do so, we upload brand new videos every day of the week, best way to see them first is of course a subscription, so click subscribe, don't forget to click the notification bell, and as always we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon, you can follow me on Twitter, Falcon the Hero, we'll see you next time, right here on Game Ranks.